Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a review of an Arige La Dore fragrance, which I have not reviewed yet on the channel. There's only a handful left, honestly. We're coming down to the end. Uh, I know I said it, my plan is to review all of the fragrances as it's one of my all-time favorite houses. And uh, I think Russian Adam is doing something very, very special with his creations. Uh, and he's an amazing person. Go watch my interviews with him if you want to get a sense of Russian Adam the man you know, the perfumer, his background, how he came to become Russian Adam. Uh, just a beautiful story, beautiful human, and he has created some amazing fragrances for the fragrance community to enjoy. His creations are for the real frag heads, in my opinion, and great introduction to things like real oud, real musk, real sandalwood, the stuff that you're not going to smell in 99.9% .9 of releases nowadays. You know, you go buy a Guerlain or a Dior or an Hermes or a, you know, and many of these houses are not using real ingredients. Um, or if they do, they're using a very, very small amount. You know, you pay $365 for a Louis Vuitton oud fragrance and you think you're getting oud and you realize that if there is any real oud in there, it's the eensy tiniest drop, right? Just so the GCMS machine can knock it out and say, ha, there is real oud in there, gotcha. But, um, you know, Russian Adams creations are really for the frag heads that want to take the next step. You know, they're tired of the circular merry-go-round game of you go to, you know, Byredo, oh, you go to another shop down the street, Le Labo, oh, you go get a Guerlain, oh, you go, you know, and, all, and, and they're all, and many people don't realize they're owned by pretty much all the same corporations or the big three or four corporations, let's say, you know, the Estee Lauders, the L'Oreal's, the LVMH, the Puiges, and it's the same thing in, you know, news media, right? Um, there's all of these news channels, but they're really all owned by just a couple people. And so for the people that want to get off of that um, merry-go-round, they want to get off of that circular, um, you know, play and, and step into a different playing field. That's where the house of Aris La Dore and Ensars and, um, you know, Agar Auras and Bortnikovs, I call them the artisanal houses, the, um, um, you know, the houses that are done by a man or a woman that kind of really gets their hands dirty. They're the ones who do the distilling. They're the ones that do the perfuming. They're the ones who, um, you know, create the presentations and all of that stuff, right? Or at least do the designs. And so uh, today we're going to talk about the most expensive fragrance from the history of Oud collection, which is uh, a collection for me that uh, really sort of uh, speaks to, you know, what I want in an Oud collection. So Russian Adam once told me that he did all of these different Oud fragrances. You know, he did Russian Oud, which was Oud and chocolate, and he did Oud Picante, which is spicy Oud, and he did, you know, Oud Zen, which is uh, Oud and Castorium and resins and stuff like that, and he did all these different Oud fragrances. And he got to a point where he said, you know, what else can I do except for just really show them the the mission statement of Arige La Dore is to show the world what real oud, real musks, real sandalwood smell like, right? So what better way to show them than to just give them an oud profile, an oud accord? And so what he did is he went through the different region regions, Indonesia, Bengal, uh, Indian oud, Chinese oud, and created the history of oud. Um, and, uh, so one of them, the most expensive of the bunch, and maybe the most, uh, least understood oud in the game, and we'll talk a little bit about that, is Kinam Oud. And so this one is the history of Kinam Oud. And if you've seen these bottles, you'll notice that this one is a special, um, bottle because of the cap. So this is actually, uh, a cap made out of, uh, an oud tree. Now it's not Kinam. Uh, if this was Kinam, this would be ten or twenty thousand dollars right here, maybe even more. Uh, that's how rare and expensive Kinam is, right? Uh, but the cap itself is made from the um, natural, wild, high quality, solid Indonesian agarwood. Okay, so the cap of this one is different from the rest of the collection because this is um, uh, the most expensive from the bunch. The history of Kinam oud. And so here's what the other, this is the last one I think I have to review from the collection, the history of uh, Indonesian oud. And so that's what most of the caps look like. They kind of look like this, which I actually really like the uh, design and the cap and all of that stuff. And, you know, you can look at the resin just kind of peeking through that, by the way, just sneaking out um, crazy. Uh, 
So even this one, which is the cheapest from the collection, is damn good. So much better than most of the Oud fragrances. Um, you know, Guerlain released an Oud fragrance line within the last year or so, and it was like Cherry Oud, Oud Cole, and Nude Oud or something, and oh god, they were just horrendous to me. I absolutely despised it. I actually have a review of um, Oud Cole on the website. You can go check that out if you really want to hear my thoughts. And, you know, that is that fragrance is like double the price of what Russian Adam is selling the history of uh, Indonesian Oud for. So, okay, enough of my soapbox. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about Kinam Oud, okay? Because when I was early in my oud exploration journey, so first of all, I'm not a perfumer. I'm not some sort of a oud expert. I don't want to stand up here and pretend I have some sort of authority on oud because I don't. I'm just a person that, as my excuse me journey has progressed, I have learned more and more to appreciate oud and definitely to appreciate when someone like Russian Adam says he feels like oud is the absolute tip top ingredient it's the highest um it's it's the top of the mountain as far as ingredients go because it's so rare and precious and it can do so many things in a composition i'm understanding exactly what he means by that as i continue on in my journey but early in my game early in the oud game i thought all of these names of oud were made up Right, so you you see things when you're looking around. Like Ensar has things like Oud uh, Sultani or Oud Mustafa or Arij Ladori has Oud Zen or you know Bortnikov has Oud Maximus or um, you know you see these Oud names like Tiger Lust or Tiger Wood 1990 or Sumatora Zen or all of these crazy names for Oud, right? And I just thought they were made up names. Like I just thought that they were just stuff that the you know, brands labeled to try to sell Oud, right? Um, and as a novice Oud head, I just thought that when you saw Kinam Oud, that Kinam was just something else made up, right? I had no clue originally. Now, this is years ago. I've since made uh, multiple videos on different types of Kinam Oud fragrances. So if you really want more Kinam talk, you can go check out my fragrance videos on... Um, Kemar Kinam by uh, Agar Aura. I also did Jungle Kinam by uh, Ensar. Uh, and there's actually going to be another Kinam fragrance we're going to be discussing very soon called Kinam Urjwani, which we'll talk about that here in a little bit. That's from Agar Aura. And so today we're talking about the history of Kinam Oud. So we're really getting into the Kinam uh, Ouds, if you will. And so I've done many videos on, on the uh, Kinam Ouds, but still, that doesn't mean I'm not standing up here on my pedestal talking down to anybody. We're still constantly learning. That's one of the beautiful things about the fragrance game, right? And so, um, specifically, I enjoyed those Kinam fragrances, like Jungle Kinam and uh, Kemmer Kinam, and, and I, I, you know, I really enjoyed them. But like this particular one, this uh, new Kinam uh, Urjwani, is 1200 $75 for 20 mils. 20 mils is $1,275. Um, and so, first of all, this is a tale of just how expensive Kinam is. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going through all this to try to stand up here and give you my credentials and claim to be some expert, like I said, because I'm not. I just wanted you to sort of understand that I do have a periphery understanding of Kinam much better than years past. And um, Kinam is actually a very hard scent to wrap your head around. To me, it is. Because uh, it is like Oud. So I actually have a five and a half hour dry down right here on my left hand. And um, so it's a, it's, it's, um, it's Oud. When you smell it, it's almost like you can sort of identify it as Oud. Meaning, you know, the traditional Lacord Oud you know, woody smell is there, but it's almost way in the background. Almost like when you first smell it, you might actually think it's missing because it's a very soft and gentle uh, scent profile. So it's actually almost the opposite of what many people have come to expect when they smell oud. Now, most of the oud that they're smelling, Tom Ford, oud wood, and Versace, oud, pour homme, noir, whatever it is, um, th those aren't ouds. Those are some sort of oud accord made by one of the big oil houses, the Simrises, the IFFs, the Givaudans, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, and oud accord is what people are used to smelling. Even if you've smelled real oud, Kinam is completely different. And it just goes to show just how 
off the beaten path it is. When Russian Adam did an interview, he once said that oud can smell like vanilla ice cream. And I thought to myself, how in the world can oud smell like vanilla ice cream? Well, there is a little bit of a vanilla ice cream facet to uh, the history of Kinam oud. There just, there is. Um, and so it's hard to wrap your head around it initially. Um, that harsh traditional oud smell is gone, but there's a little bit of it way in the background. So when you smell it, um, it's almost like uh, it's transparent, right? So it's almost like the um, harsh lacord oud woodiness. You can kind of like see right through it. Like you kind of get it. It's there, but in a veil, if you will. So you can kind of see right through it and peer to all of these little details. And I almost had to change or adapt my way of thinking to appreciate Kinam. Because the very first time that I smelled Kinam, which actually I have to say comes from Russian Adam. Russian Adam sent me some actual Kinam oil. So this is Kinam by Russian Adam. It was a Chinese plantation Kinam, which we'll talk about that here in a little bit as well. Um, and so I remember whenever I... Uh, smelled Kinam for the very first time, or what this Kinam scent profile was supposed to be, I said, it's not my favorite, because I like my uh, ouds to be challenging and animalic. And Russian Adam and I, we both share the same disease, if you will. That's the joke. Our disease is that we always want more. We want more animalics, more uh, fermented oud smell, more of the you know, musks and sandalwoods and heavier notes and, or, you know, the, these civets and castoriums. We want more of all of that. And um, kinam is the exact opposite, actually. So I had to sort of change the way I think about it to begin appreciating it. Because at first I was like, this is not for me. Like, um, yes, I, I, I see maybe what it's supposed to be, but it's not for me. But slowly, the more I've worn it, especially wearing it to bed, that's one of the biggest things for me. I love wearing Kinam to bed. I'll take a um, toothpick and I can actually still smell it here on the end. Um, and I'll, you know, you just dip it in in the tiniest little swipe and you're gone, you're off into another land for 12 plus hours. Um, and it develops very slowly in the oil form. So one of the reasons why Russian Adam wanted to create this in perfumer's alcohol uh, and oud, it, you know, that was in perfumer's alcohol like this is that sometimes when you put real oil on your skin, it develops over a very long time period, right? The clock, it's a long shot clock, right? This makes it more into where you can experience like a top, middle, and bottom in a much faster transition, right? So you're not as, um, it's not like you have to wait five or six hours for the oil to sort of um, change, if you will. That was the idea with him creating this line. And I absolutely love it. I love all of them. There isn't a one that I don't like. Uh, I think it's one of the best Oud lines, even value for money. Even though that this retail was $850, that's how much the history of Kinam Oud is. I bet you it would sell for double that right now. I bet you bottles of this are going for $1,500 on the secondary market because it was there was 50, I think he said there was 50 or 100 bottles of this made for the whole world. Um, and so it was a very um, limited, extremely limited release. So I'm very, very lucky to have got a bottle. Um, and I did pay for these with my own money, by the way. He did not give these to me. He sent me some samples of some stuff, and he's been very, very generous and kind with everything he sent. But I paid for those. That was, that was expensive. Um, and so Kinam is the opposite of that traditional oud smell that you think you know in your head, right? So Kinam sort of has this soft, milky aspect. I mentioned um, vanilla ice cream earlier. Also, think about something that is slightly minty. Imagine something like um, vanilla ice cream with a little bit of this minty aftertaste, right? And, and the, van the vanilla ice cream is actually kind of a good... Um, it's a good representation of the smell because when you get that mintiness, it's almost like you're inhaling in a in a forest in the cold, right? When you inhale and, you know, uh, when it's when it's very, very cold and you get that sort of antiseptic, you know, cold air and, that, and it almost feels like there's something minty in the cold air, that's a little bit how Kinam smells, right? With that veil of traditional oud, sort of transparent veil that you can like see through, almost like a membrane that you can go in and out of, right? And um, so, first of all, describing Kinam is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. It is damn near impossible to describe this scent. To me, it is. 
uh, because it's really more like a feeling that it gives you. And so the traditional oud smell is in the background, the lacord wood smell is in the background, and you will be able to identify it as oud. I think if for oud heads, they, they would be able to. They would be able to. The average person may not, though. But, um, and, and to make it even more confusing, okay, there are different types of kinam. So there is uh, black kinam. There is green kinam. There's white kinam. There's purple kinam. Um, so there's all of these different types of kinam, right? And the icing on the cake, to top it all off, to make this uh, even more of a mystery, is that whenever you see these many houses names, so Ensar did jungle kinam, right? Um, that's a good example. So Ensar did jungle kinam. Many times when they use the name kinam in the name of the perfume, there is actually no kinam in the fragrance itself. It is a representation of what the perfumer thinks a kinam note would smell like, and they create it using other ouds. So for example, if you go to Ensar's website, Google Ensar Jungle Kinam, click on the Ensar website, and you'll notice he lists two ouds that are used in that fragrance. One was, uh, I mentioned it earlier, one was um, Sumatora Zen, and the other was Tiger Wood 1990. Neither of those are kinam perfumes, right? Neither of those are kinam ouds. Okay, so that makes it even more complicating because <clears throat> you're not actually smelling real kinam. You're smelling the interpretation of kinam. Okay, so now that the base is set, if you will, um, and you kind of have an understanding of kinam, and I'll go through this, I guess, again, when we do our, because I want somebody, even if they click on the, the, um, Kinam Urjwani video to know this background because I think it really makes understanding Kinam that much more important, right? So what makes this a special Kinam fragrance? Well, a couple things. So the first thing is this is one of the most accurate and realistic portrayals of Kinam I've ever smelled. So I've smelled the actual Kinam oil. Now granted, this is a plantation oil. So some real oud heads may be like, oh, you know, you need wild Kinam from a hundred-year-old centurion grandmother tree from, um, you know, the area of uh, this specific area of Laos or, or, you know, whatever. I'm not that in, I'm not that into oud. You can see I go everywhere, okay? I go all over the place when it comes to the fragrance world. I, and that's one thing that I think makes me somewhat unique. And I know there are some people that don't like that because let's say they like vintage fragrances. When I talk about something new, they get put off. Someone finds my channel and I'm talking about a niche fragrance and they think I only talk about niche. I talk about vintage and they don't like it. Or I talk about a cheapie and they don't like it. Or I talk about a $3,000 Roja, they don't like it. Or I talk about an artisanal fragrance and they don't like it. But what it does for me is it allows me to have one of the most broad, I would say, um, exposure, understanding of all of the different types of, of fragrances. It's funny because when I first really got heavily into perfume about 10 years ago, I only bought niche. So I only bought like Amouage and Creeds and stuff like that. And I looked down on Lalique's and because, oh, what can a $30 perfume compare to a $500 Creed, right? How wrong, how wrong was I, boys and girls? So once I discovered that, of course, my horizons greatly opened and I was able to sort of uh, experience and appreciate everything from all walks of life in the fragrance world. Um, so I bring that up just to say that uh, I am not, there are some people who they're like, I'm an oud head, I'm selling all of my collection, I'm going all real oud, I'm buying only Ensar, you know, I'm not doing that. Um, but but I have gotten more and more and more into oud as time has gone on, especially the real oud from the artisanal houses, if you will, right? And so for me, what makes the history of Kinam oud my favorite Kinam fragrance that I've smelled so far, is that this is a perfect representation of how I would imagine Kinam being burned slowly, gently, on a very low heat in a burner, and smelling the whiffs in the air. Now, I've never done that, but this is how I would imagine it to be. Uh, it's the most lifelike to the actual oil, if you will. Um, and so, it's the most lifelike, lifelike, accurate portrayal. Also, the other thing is that Russian Adam told me that he used actual kinam. So he distilled kinam. Uh, there is actual 
What did they say? Okay, so this perfume composition is focused on the actual wild Vietnamese white kinam and Chinese green kinam from the plantation. Now, I don't know if this is green kinam. It just says kinam by Russian Adam. Um, but but uh, it does say Chinese plantation, so maybe this is the green kinam oil that he sent me. I honestly don't know. Um, but I can tell you that uh, one of the coolest things about this is that there is actual kinam in here. And a lot of oud fragrances that say kinam don't. Now, I would certainly hope for $1,275 that kinam Erjwani also has real kinam in it. But we'll talk about that tonight when I do my early impression video. Hopefully tonight, maybe tomorrow. So the back, so here's the backstory of kinam and, and why it's so rare and controversial as well. Something else I should mention, I forgot to mention in the beginning of this video is the thinking, the um, conventional thinking about kinam goes that uh, kinam comes from the heartwood of an ancient Aquilaria tree, okay? And there's all of these different types of Aquilaria trees. There's like 15 or 20 different species of Aquilaria trees, right? And this is where the mystery grows deeper because some think that kinam is a specific type of oud tree. And others think that any species can create kinam if it's just given enough time and given the right conditions, that kinam, that it's almost like there's a transformation in the heartwood of the tree. And so what's interesting is whether they use the heartwood of the tree or the surrounding wood, I forget what it's called, but it does have a name. You know, that's something that in the old days when they used to make Mysore sandalwood, they used to only use the heartwood of the tree. Now they mix in some of the other woods with the heartwood as well, because of course everything gets cheaper over time, it feels like. Everything gets worse, it feels like. Um, and so, but with kinam, it's only in the heart of the tree, okay? And some people think it's a species. Some people think that kinam can come from any species of oud if it's just given enough time. But the conventional wisdom was it had to be an old tree. Kinam cannot be in a tree 10 or 20 years old, right? Or less than that even. And um, so you used to think 100-year-old trees and blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and what ended up happening now that there's trying to be this sustainability happening with Kinam and all of this plantation planting that's going on is they're finding Kinam in seven, eight, nine year old trees and it's blowing people's minds, right? So, um, it's almost like there is a, uh, ref you know, it refutes that theory, if you will, that it has to come from very old trees, um, and, and so that is the other mystery, is there's a lot of opinions on Kinam, but there's nothing actually solid evidence. It's a little bit of a mystery still, I think. So uh, the history of Kinam Oud, what does it smell like? So here's kind of uh, the smell to me. And the first thing to understand is this is a beautifully addictive, soft smell. So I have a six hour, almost six hours dry down now, right? And um, while it's pervasive, I can still smell it clear as day on my hand where I sprayed it today, earlier today. Um, it's a very soft smell. Even the first hour or two or three, it stays extremely soft. Now, Russian Adam did mix some other things in with this perfume, okay? So it's not just uh, Kinam Oud, right? Um, and, and so if you look at some of these other fragrances, like for example, uh, Indonesian oud or Bengal oud, or it just lists like oud as the ingredient, that's it. But with the history of kinam oud, because he was trying to create this smell, if you will, of, of kinam, there are some other things that are used. So according to Parfumo, they list Ambret Seed, Clary Sage Absolute, Oris Absolute, Multiple types of oud, Vietnamese oud, Chinese oud, Vietnamese oud, mimosa, white ambergris in the base. Okay, so that's sort of the blend, if you will, to give this impression of the kinam smell, right? So, a uh, beautiful, soft, addicting smell is really what it is. Soft and yet still pervasive is the way I would describe it. So you smell it constantly, even though it's this soft, delicate smell. And so imagine smelling... Um, an oud fragrance where that paint thinner, sort of uh, rougher, sharp aspects of the oud feel very transparent, like I said earlier. So it's almost like you're walking through that membrane and it's almost like the rougher elements of the oud are there, 
but uh, distilled in a way where it doesn't stop you from picking out any of the more subtle nuances. And the subtle nuances, so here's what I'll say. If you are somebody who uh, doesn't like oud traditionally, or you don't like the animalic challenging ouds that I love, right? If the history of Chinese oud or the history of Indian oud or that fermented, um, you know, style of oud uh, puts you off, try this. Try kinam, re a good high quality kinam fragrance. Because if you're someone who appreciates the details in perfumery, I don't know of any other oud that allows you to really pick pick out and be awed by the little details. Each time I smell this, I get something different. Every single time. Every single time. It, without fail. Um, and same for the actual oil itself. It's unbelievable. The little small details and the Kinam fragrances that you can that you can pick out. So reviewing it is not easy because, like I said, this one uses purple Kinam. This Kinam Urjwani, which I'm going to talk about soon, hopefully. Um, I've been wearing it to bed for a couple nights now. And um, so, you know, the, the, that particular Kinam fragrance uses purple Kinam, which is more leathery, and I get even more of an Oris, Irisy like feel. Feels like, feels like Iris. Um, and the history of uh, Kinam Oud, you get more of this sort of green floral uh, aspect. So the mintiness is there, but it's almost like the back of your throat, sort of peppermint. So I know I said minty, but think peppermint, if you will. Think about this peppermint, but ever so slightly done. Everything is done so delicately, like an angel just came and put, you know, each little detail down. I know that's a cheesy reference, but think about it that way. Everything is so delicate in this perfume. And so this crisp peppermint note at the back of your throat when you inhale this very cold air um, is there. And it gives it this minty, fresh outdoorness, and it also gives it this almost clean vibe. So imagine this antiseptic, clean feeling, this um, sterile, okay? It's a very sterile fragrance. Um, Kinam smells extremely, um, you know, like you're, imagine smelling a cloud, right? Imagine smelling a cloud that's been uh, sterilized. Not that clouds have bacteria or germs, but let's just imagine that, if you will. Try to, try to, Think about that in your brain and then contrast that with what you imagine an oud fragrance to smell like and add this slight floral, slight bitter. So when I say bitter, I don't want you to think about this, um, you know, don't think about this traditional earthy bitterness that you may smell in other perfumes. The bitterness here is not in the traditional sense. It's just the only way I can describe um, because there's almost like this fresh baked biscuit or bread accord to Kinam as well. And imagine contrasting that with that airy fluffiness, right? This light airy fluffiness. And imagine the green floral Kinamic effect that I mentioned earlier. And the florals feel like they're emanating from the oud. That's one of the hardest parts is the florals in Kinam feel like they're coming from the wood. They don't feel like you're smelling a floral. They don't feel like you're smelling the mimosa flower itself right? They don't feel like you're smelling the blue lotus or frangipani or whatever it is. It really feels like you are smelling the oud that has a floral touch, okay? Just like when it comes to the history of Indonesian oud, it feels like you're smelling a little bit of this cola vibe that's coming from the oud, right? Uh, and so we'll talk about that later on as well. I'll do a video on the history of Indonesian oud as well. But um, so imagine this exotic wood smell that's very fluffy uh, vanilla ice creamy, minty, cooling, but also extremely relaxing. Very, very relaxing. And there's a bit of this incense smoking wafting effect, right? So imagine that, you know, when you spray it, you smell it and you get a little bit of this incense-y smoke, but it's like no other incense you've ever smelled. That's one of the hardest times. That's why I say it's such a hard, how do you describe this fragrance? Um, so imagine this gentle, like a gentle giant fragrance is how I really think about this. Imagine, imagine this gentle, gently heated Kinam, imagine like Kinamic shavings being heated over this, um, you know, low temperature heater. And, um, the smoke doesn't smell like traditional incense. It smells of what we discussed earlier, 
with a slightly powdery touch. So imagine fluffy, powdery, okay? Imagine like a dandelion when you grab it and blow it and the seeds go everywhere, right? That's actually the feeling of the way Kinam smells, especially on my skin. Oh, it's, um, it's really something that has grown on me. And, um, you know, they mentioned mimosa flowers earlier. I actually wrote that it almost has this mimosa flower powdery effect before I even knew Russian had them put mimosa in here. Um, with this green crisp. So imagine this crisp feel. So that's one of the biggest contrasts is it's not necessarily oud wood versus this mintiness. It's almost more of this crisp, clean, sterile bit contrasted with the fluffy, powdery, floral. Imagine crisp and clean and fluffy and powdery and sort of coming together in this dreamlike state. It's almost like you're... Um, it's almost like you're smelling something in a dream when you smell Kinam. And um, slightly minty, slightly minty apple vibe. Is, imagine like the skin of a green apple, um, but in a cloud, if that makes sense. And it's so pure and so meditative. I mean, you could just like, you know, woosa. You could just relax when you wear this. That's the thing about Kinam is it does have that, all of the features I mentioned earlier, the floral bits, the mintiness, the... Um, creaminess, the milkiness. There's a little bit of a milky aspect to this as well. Slightly vanillic as well, but not like Guerlain vanilla style that you're thinking, but slightly vanillic, a little bit of this sweetness, almost like you took some cream or, or half and half, right? And mixed it with the milk and it adds a little bit of this uh, little sweetness to it, just a touch. And um, so what I've come to decide when it comes to Kinam, my interpretation of Kinam and, and what I've finally decided on is that Kinam is not about me sitting up here and telling you that it has fluffiness, powderiness, milkiness, um, uh, you know, all of these different floral, slightly bitter aspects and mintiness and coolness and peppermintiness. I, none of that is what Kinam is about. Kinam, to me, is not about breaking down the notes. It's about this amazing, relaxing feeling, almost like the girl of your dreams comes behind you and just rubs your neck right here, right here, right? Where you have this, you know, spot where you're just like, oh, you can just like put your head back and just let all of the emotions and stress and, you know, your racing mind just stop. And you just kind of appreciate that silence, right? You just appreciate that meditative moment where you're just like, the moment right before you fall asleep, right? Like you have this very meditative calmness and you're just in that moment, right? Right before you fall asleep. Um, and, and it's really uh, a fragrance that is about sort of taking your mind away. And that's why I said earlier that I love wearing this before bed. Or, or oud in general, really. But Kinam is the perfect example of this transportative, meditative. It's almost like this is much better than therapy to me. All of you people who pay for some therapist who has problems in his or her own life to talk to you about it, forget about that. Um, treat yourself, in my opinion. And I love, absolutely have come to love Kinam. Um... I didn't like it at first. Actually, I despised it at first. I was like, this is not oud. Now, don't get me wrong. I still love the Indian oud, the fecal ouds, the animalic ouds, all of these different things. I, I do love it. I love that. But this has a place. And it has a very special place and a very distinct place. And um, I, would, um, I, I would venture that for oud heads like me, if you give Kinam time and come at it the way that I just explained it, come at it from a place of this transportative, meditative, relaxing, almost like this is a medicine, you know, almost like when you're wearing this, you're not wearing a fragrance, you're wearing a friend that's going to put your mind at ease, right? And relax you and all of the tenseness. You ever like when I mentioned a massage earlier, you ever like given someone a massage and you can almost feel the knots? in their back or, or in their shoulders or whatever. This is almost like all of your muscles just sort of relax. All of those knots disappear. And there's also knots up here in your head, right? All of those knots, all of the thinking, all of the 
worrying, all of the uh, fear or, you know, disbelief or whatever you have that is holding you back from just letting go and relaxing, Kinam takes you to that place. And that's what I think Kinam is about. I don't think it's about this smell or that smell, although I think I did about as good enough job as I could breaking down the actual smell for you, but I think it's about this process, this feeling, this state of mind. Kinam is a state of mind, if you will. Um, it's it's almost like reading Confucius quotes or something, or um, but but it, it really is a state of mind. And um, so very, very lucky to have experienced this. Thank you to Russian Adam for creating this. I know that this is one of those fragrances where, since it is so limited, very, very few people will get to smell. But if you're somebody like me who creates like a wish list of fragrances one day, and you know, there are stuff on my wish list like, um, oh, I don't even know if I can get to my wish list right now. Let's see, collection, uh, wish list. There's 725 perfumes on my wish list, and it's all kind of shit. Stuff that I just don't have in my collection. There's some of the rare older Mona de Oreos on here. Um, you know, someone mentioned there's a brand called Anonym that they think Russian Adam is behind. Recently, I put those on the wish list. There's the Acros I've never smelled. There's like discontinued fragrances like Paco Rabanne Excess Extreme and hard to find Serge Luton's. And, you know, these, all of these, there's just all kinds of stuff. Uh, Rocco Barocco Vetiver, which is impossible to find. Alain Delon Plus, which someone sent me a bottle, a picture of a bottle recently. I just can't buy any fragrances because I'm going through the divorce. All kind of fragrances that, you know, I would love to find. Halston 101, which is a true gem. They're all on my wish list one day to try to hunt down or, or at least sniff, right? Because I love, I love the breadth of knowledge. I love exploring all of the different areas of perfume. Um, and so put this on the wish list. And if anyone's ever breaking up a collection in the future, or, you know, you win the lottery and want to offer someone like an obscene price for one of these bottles or something, you never know uh, what will happen. You never know. Or maybe a decant will fall on your lap or something, right? That's what I do. I put it on the wish list. Um, and, you know, you can only do what you can do. You can't own everything. But uh, it's great to be able to smell as, as much as you can when you're exploring. And this is one that if you're an oud fanatic, uh, I think you would be extremely impressed with. So... Thank you, Russian Adam, for creating this. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know what you think of this if you had a chance to smell it. Let me know what you think of Kinam in general or, you know, the House of Aris Lodori, the indie houses we talked about, the artisanal houses we talked about. So, love doing this video. It's an absolute pleasure for me to get to do these videos for you guys. I appreciate everyone watching and commenting and the support. and Everything you guys do for me is amazing. And honestly, I truly look forward to doing these videos. And when I don't do them, it feels off. It feels like I there should be something in my life that is not there. You know what I mean? Like when I don't do these videos, um, the day doesn't feel complete. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here with me. Cheers, guys. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.